Hi, Jason. My name is Kevin Siskow, and I'm the director for the Founder Institute in New York City. The question today is about wearables. Google Glass and Apple Watch have created a new UI that has been being referred to as a glance on, meaning that its intended use is to give the user the notification and return them to their daily task as quick as possible. So being that they're similar, how is Apple Watch's operating system going to overcome the challenges of daily usefulness that Google Glass failed at, besides the obvious differentiator that it's on your wrist versus your face? Thank you. Okay, uh, great question, and uh, th always great to get a question from my hometown of New York City, and Central Park looks amazing. Um, so great job. I think that's the best Ask Jason video we've had to date. Extra bonus points for you. Uh, you're going to get a good retweet from me for that one. Um, okay, glanceables. Glanceables is a great new category of mobile. Um, a lot of people talking about it. I'm getting pitched on it a lot. The concept is, do I have to interact? Do I have to type? Do I have to stop myself? Um, you know, when I get a notification? And uh, the answer is obviously no, but there's a little bit of setup because, let's face it, we all get too many notifications. Some notifications you want, some you don't, and some apps have just been spammy, spammy, spammy with the notifications. So when you get a watch, you're really having to reset your whole notification lifestyle. You know, on your phone, it's one thing to get clusters and clusters of notifications all day. You deal with it when you open your phone if you want to, or you ignore them. Well, on your watch, you know, they're chiming in. And so what you realize when you first get the Apple Watch is, oh my God, I have too many notifications. And you have to spend a huge amount of time then go correcting that. And that's really the challenge is that now users, they're kind of getting overwhelmed and are they getting enough value from these? You know, knowing that your Uber is outside, that's a critical notification. Knowing that your spouse or your child uh, or your executive producer for your podcast is SMSing you, that's critical information. You know, a lot of the other SMSs you're getting, maybe they're not. And so what we're going to need is a little bit of what they call machine learning, um, perhaps artificial intelligence, if you will, to start understanding what stuff we glance at and is important. And there's a lot of interesting projects that will start to happen with um, very simple gestures. So let's say, um, you know, you, you get an alert and it comes in and it's a news alert. And you say, hey, well, that's a great news alert from inside. Okay, good. It's Walking Dead. I wanted to know that. I'm really into The Walking Dead. Okay, now I get another one. And, you know, this one's about space. And, you know, space is a big category. I don't want everything on space all day long interrupting me. Well, if I got the space one, maybe I shake my wrist, and that's an indication that I don't want to get more space. Or maybe I just go like this, and I just throw it away with my hand. Um, so these micro gestures are going to come. When micro gestures come, combined with the glanceables, I think we're going to start to, combined with machine learning, wow, this could get interesting. But here's the thing. Consumers don't want to set anything up. For years, we had my.yahoo, my.aol.com, PageFlakes, NetVibes, a whole series of home pages where if you did work and you set them up and you put your stock quotes in and you put stuff like your calendar in and you put in what topics you like and what TV shows you watch, you get this really great, rich experience. People don't want to do it. They're lazy. Only 2 3% of users would take any time to set anything up. So auto-magical is the term we use in the industry. Can we auto-magically figure out what to send people? I think the Apple Watch has done it best. And I think Apple Watch will continue to figure it out. The steep, Apple Watch is a steep learning curve. Um, for a product like this, it's going to take literally, you're going to have to send people to a 30-minute course. I really think like, you know, if Apple really want to make, wants to make the watch work, they literally should do just a 20-minute training session with people when they buy it. It's that complex. You have to sit there and have to have a, a mentor because, you know, typing on it and setting up apps, it, it's just, it's too hard. So, and this is how it typically is, right? When people first got smartphones, when it was the Trio and it was the Nokia and when it was Palm Pilot, the things was too hard. It takes a couple of years for things to get a little easier and that's the awkward teens. This is the awkward period for wearables. But when we come out of this awkward period, hey, you know what? These wearables are gonna grow up and they're gonna be sexy adults. And they're gonna be easy to deal with and they're not gonna be like obnoxious, awkward college kids and teenagers. So it's a really good time to get into the space. That's why we're doing this launch mobile wearables and IoT event actually. So go to launchmw.com and check it out because there's a lot of issues here that we have to deal with and glanceables is definitely a topic of the moment. So we're gonna be talking a lot about it at the event. Great question. 
Hey, everybody. Thanks again for listening to this Ask Jason episode brought to you by our friends at Pivotal. You can go see them at Pivotal.io and at Pivotal on Twitter. They do a great job working with companies to build some of the most elite and awesome apps in the world. A lot of my good friends work over there, just super smart people. And we have a really deep, longstanding, multi-year relationship with them to put on conferences that help founders uh, learn more about emerging topics. And Launch Mobile is uh, happening for the second time. We call it Launch Mobile Wearables and IoT, Internet of Things. Um, and we're doing that in conjunction with our friends at Pivotal, my friend Sandeep over there, Sunny, um, and I are uh, co-hosting along with Peter Rojas, the founder of Gizmodo and Engadget. So the three of us are really looking for the things that capture our attention with our editorial team and getting them on stage so we can ask them the hard questions and really think about the future of wearables the Internet of Things, mobile, um, it's really changing everything in the world because the 7 billion people on the planet, more than half of them are going to skip the desktop revolution and go directly to mobile. It's a really, really amazing uh, sea change, paradigm change, and it's going to be huge for entrepreneurs. San Francisco, October 15th and 16th, founders come free to all my events. That's one of the things we're really committed to is getting founders into these events for free. Why? Because when I was coming up as a kid from Brooklyn, nobody let me in their goddamn events. I was bitter about it. I always wondered what it was like in there when the elite people were drinking the champagne and why they didn't let me into their events. And I said, if I ever make it, I'm going to change the game. I'm going to let the up-and-comers into my event for free. I'm going to have the cool kids, the up-and-comers, the outsiders, the awkward ones. You know why? Because I was the outsider, the awkward one. People were like, oh, my God, Jason, you're the man. You're hanging out with all these incredible people. you got this great circle of friends. It did not start that way for me. Fifteen years ago, people didn't know who Jason Calacanis was. I was lobby crashing. I was broke, and I was sitting in the lobby of events, trying to sneak into events. Launch mobile wearables, you don't have to sneak in. You're my guest if you're a founder. Now, if you're a VC or a big company person, buy a goddamn ticket. Support the event. But this is our philosophy. We want founders to come for free. Go to launchmw.com, apply if you're a founder to come for free. And you know what? If I didn't have Pivotal as a partner sharing the huge bill, hundreds of thousands of dollars to put this event on, I couldn't offer that. So I just want to say personally thank you to my friends at Pivotal for helping me help founders get inside the tent and be insiders and not be held outside, not wondering what's going on in there. I'm just trying to just totally, in this last chapter of my career, you know, listen, I'm 44, I just want to shake things up a little bit, break some shit. That's what I do at my events, breaking stuff and letting those outsiders in. So come to launchmw.com, launchmw.com. All right, thank you.